Hey everybody, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna look at a great viewer question about using blind and buried vias. How do you use them? How do you set them up in Altium Designer? And when should you use different styles for different routing objectives? We're gonna run over that in this video. Make sure to check us out on the whiteboard and then hop into Altium Designer and follow along. First, let's take a look at this viewer question. Senthil Kumar writes, Hi Zach, number one, please make a video about how to do fan out for a fine pitch BGA, pitch 0.4 millimeters or 0.3 millimeters. And two, what's the difference between microvia and blind and buried via and how we use them in a PCB layout? So obviously these two questions are closely related. In order to do a fan out for a very fine pitch BGA that has say a pitch of 0.3 or 0.4 millimeters, you are going to probably have to use blind and buried microvias, or you're going to have to do very fine line routing between the pads. Most likely it will be using these types of vias. So I'm gonna answer the second question first and then we'll save that first question for another video because it is a bit involved. So let's take a look at the different types of vias, specifically blind and buried vias and micro vias. Now how you use blind and buried vias depends on how you build your stack up. And there are some typical ways that you use blind and buried vias in different types of stack ups and specifically in HDI design. So if we look at a stack up, let's say involving these four layers, we can have a blind via that starts at one layer and then terminates at the very next layer. And so this would be a very simple case with a single blind via. We then typically mirror that over to the other layer and then we have a conventional buried via starting here and then terminating here at this other end. This would be a I plus N plus I type of build. And essentially the I tells you the number of blind via layers up on the top extending upwards and then extending downwards here mirrored to the bottom. And then we say N here because we would typically have more than one signal layer spanning this conventional buried via in the internal layers. Then we could also have a through hole via spanning the entire stack up starting from the top and then ending all the way down at this bottom layer. And then you could land on any of these layers in between. So this would be a simple one plus N plus one type of stack up where you have one blind via on the outer layer and then you have intervening N intervening layers covered by this conventional buried via. Now, of course, we can extend this further and instead of having just a blind via going to L2, we can also have a buried via going to L3. So we could then also start here with a buried via and here on the very next layer. And then we have a via transition like this. And then once again, we can mirror this down and do a buried via transition like this. So the way these builds are constructed is such that these are the available routes that you could use. But just because you use blind and varied on the top layer doesn't mean you have to also use them on the bottom layer. It is typical to do this, and this is a standard type of HDI stack up, but it's not required that you also use these two via types on the bottom layer. If you wanted to, and you needed to route all the way down to these lower layers, you could do everything through this through hole via if you wanted to, or you could use our internal buried via if you wanted to. Typically, these are being used to escape from, let's say, a fine pitch BGA. Using this with a fine pitch BGA allows you to put this directly on the ball, and then you could stack your micro vias over two layers, and then you could have this run up to the surface and then stack to another ball on your BGA. And this continues out over and over until you've hit all of your pins on your BGA. So this is kind of the standard tool that's used to route in and out of BGA through the internal layers. And the reason we do that is so that we can route underneath these different balls when the pitch gets very small. So when I drew out the vias in the previous stack up, we have some important considerations here on the size of the vias that we can use. Now, these vias that are used as blind or buried vias, they can be mechanically drilled. And these are typically going to be vias with a hole diameter D 
uh, that is greater than or equal to six mils. So that's about our limit for mechanical drilling. Now, if we need to go smaller than six mil barrel diameter, then we're gonna have to use laser drilling. So that's how we hit these different diameter limits. So less than six mils, go with laser drilling. So not all fabricators are gonna be able to do laser drilling and not all fabricators are going to offer mechanical drilling down to six mils. You may be stuck at eight mils. So just keep that in mind. Now, the next thing, what determines this depth? Well, of course, this depth, we'll call it H, that is determined by our layer thickness. So the dielectric thickness determines H. And in order to fabricate a blind or buried via that is highly reliable, we have to stick to a certain aspect ratio or a ratio of H to D. So typically for a, let's say, through hole via on a standard thickness board, this could be something like 10 to one. So for example, this would be like a 62 mil board with a six mil mechanically drilled through hole. That would give you a 10 to one ratio. You can even see this go as high as 12 to one with a thicker board. And if you're gonna to go to these types of limits, this is pretty extreme. That's where you're gonna to have to make sure, again, you contact your fabricator, make sure that they can handle these different um, aspect ratios and that they can prove reliability. For a blind and buried via, we're gonna have something much lower. Uh, typically, the largest that this ratio should get should be one to one. So if we have, let's say, a six mil dielectric thickness, then we could have a six mil diameter. However, we would like to see something more like 0.67 to one. So that would be a six mil diameter in a four mil thick substrate. So that's a two thirds ratio. So as you try and make this diameter smaller, it's going to require you to use a thinner substrate in order to keep your aspect ratio within an acceptable limit to ensure reliability. And of course, eventually, as you make this diameter of this hole smaller, eventually you get into this laser drilling regime and you're no longer gonna be able to mechanically drill those vias. So when I draw this out, this looks like a conventional via, but it could also be a microvia. So a microvia typically is visualized having this you know, kind of sloped structure like this, and then you have the landing pad down here, and then your traces go off like this. So now let's look at how we can use these vias in stacks, and then we'll look at another type of via called a boomerang via. So once we know our layer transitions in the stack up, how can we use those different combinations of vias to hit different layers while routing? Well, first, typically, if you're starting on from a component, then you're gonna start on the surface layer. And then if you're gonna go into an internal layer using vias, you would then come down and then land on another layer. Now, you need to make the decision. Do we route over somewhere else and go to another via? Or do we continue through the stack up directly using a buried via? Well, you can really do either. Typically, you can stack blind and buried vias. That's perfectly fine. Or you can go over to another part of the board and you can then go to a buried via over here. So this type of routing path where you route down and over and then down is called a staggered via. So you have staggered blind and buried vias. This type of arrangement is called a stacked blind buried via. And you can technically do either. There are reasons to do both. This is typically what you'll see in BGA fan out. This is typically what you'll see when you're just doing some general routing. Now, are there any reasons to avoid stacked blind and buried vias? Well, it's not that you can't use them or that you shouldn't use them. It's just that as the stack gets taller and taller, there becomes more of a reliability issue. So the reliability issue arises and is related to the aspect ratio of these vias. And as these get stacked taller and taller, there is the chance that they could exhibit an intermittent failure where they fracture after heating up, but then when the board cools back down, the contact here between different copper portions on this uh, microvia structure then closes, and then you get a closed circuit again. So there are reliability issues with these. Fabricators have gotten better over time at dealing with this and, and qualifying these builds so that they know that they are reliable. So before you start stacking up blind and buried vias to very high numbers, make sure you check with your fabricator and make sure that you know 
the aspect ratio at which they are going to be able to ensure high reliability. Now, another type of routing that's available with vias is actually called boomerang routing. So this involves starting on a layer, let's say the top layer, going down through a through hole via all the way down to your bottom layer. So here we have the top, here we have the bottom. And then if we need to land on, let's say this internal layer, we can then come over and then go up to this internal layer. So the reason we do this is so that we could eliminate a stub if we were to just go straight through this through hole via and then land here on this layer. And typically you might not see this just coming back up one layer. This might come back up two or three layers. So that way you can eliminate any kind of long stub. Essentially what you've done here is you've eliminated this stub, which might resonate and create excess noise, and you've replaced it with a trace along this section, and then you finished off your route with this via, and then you can continue routing on this internal layer over this direction. Another good reason to do this type of routing is that it eliminates the need to stack a bunch of blind buried vias through this part of the stack up in order to get to this final layer. So typically what you might have to do if you want to get all the way down to that layer is you would start here, you'd have your first blind via, then you'd have a buried via, then you might have your conventional through hole, and then you get all the way down to here to this layer. Whereas it's a lot simpler to just route through this one via, come over, and then come back up through this blind via. So that's much simpler routing. Another reason that this is good is that it eliminates any of the potential reliability issues that come with a very large stack of blind buried vias. So you have to rely on a fabricator to have very good quality control measures to and testing measures to ensure that they can reliably fabricate something like this. Whereas this is gonna be much easier to fabricate and it's probably gonna be much more reliable. So I would say boomerang is gonna be preferred to something like this where you have a very, very big stack of blinded buried vias. Now using all of these different types of vias successfully requires designing the right stack up. And then of course you need to get that stack up qualified with your fabricator. So make sure to check out the link in the description where I go over all of the different types of stack ups that support these different vias. Now let's see how we can configure all of this in Altium Designer and how we use it during routing. So let's take a look at how to set up some of these different routing options in Altium Designer. So first thing you need to do is of course go into your stack up. I have a dummy stack up created here. I'm just gonna create it with eight layers. The thicknesses don't really matter for our purposes, but in reality, you do wanna of course set the layer thicknesses so that you have a stack up that's manufacturable and that you stay within your fabricator's DFM guidelines for HDI PCBs. What we wanna do is add some via types. So by default, we only have the through hole option, but we need to set up some blind and buried vias. So you need to pick your start and end layers, and generally, since we're dealing with something like maybe an I plus N plus I stack up, we're going to set some symmetric via transitions on these top and bottom layer pairs. And then we wanna set our internal via pair so that we can go through these inner layers through the conventional section. Here, you can also set microvia if these are going to be fabricated as microvias. Um, you can also just leave them as conventional vias. This can be done with laser drilling or mechanical drilling. But in this example, this is how I have it all set up. These via transitions are just defined as transitions. They are not defined as actual width and depth. The only depth that's defined here is based on the layer depth, and it's not defining the pad width or the drill width. The other thing that you can define here is of course you can place a skip via just like this, and you can make that skip via a micro via as I'm showing here on the right side of the stack up. How do we use all of these different tools? Well, let's just suppose that I'm on the top layer, I'm going to start routing a trace through here, and I wanna make a layer transition. So when I hit the star key, I automatically make a layer transition to the second layer. But of course, I can hit the pause key or the tab key and then go over here into the properties panel. And if I want, I can select one of these other layers. Now I can select down to layer three and then click, and then I will land on layer three. Here in this example, what it does is it's automatically placing a transition from one to three. 
But you can see here that because I'm on layer three and I've selected this, it's automatically applied this as a stacked micro via. So you can see that here also if I go up to the top layer and select this via, I have a micro via from one to two, and then I have my micro via from two to three. So it's automatically placing them as stacked micro vias. If you wanted to do this as like staggered, what you would have to do is instead go back here to your trace on the top layer, start routing, and then hit the star key. And you see how it lands here on layer two in the properties panel. Just go ahead and click that and then continue routing just a little bit and then do another layer transition and that will take you to layer three. So that's how you do a staggered micro via. Then once you're over here, you could then of course hit the layer transition again. What it's doing is it's dropping that conventional buried via, but it's only going down to layer four. So here I can hit star again. You see it's gonna go down to layer five. Star again is gonna take us to layer six. That takes us to layer six. And then if I hit star again, I'm going from six to seven. So this is again a micro via, it's just inverted. And if I want to, I could hit the pause key, come all the way over here, just click bottom layer. And again, you see here on the right side, it's automatically going to place a stacked micro via here down to layer eight. And then I can just click it and there it is. Now I'm on layer eight. So I've done all of those routes pretty simply. Of course, anytime you want to go back and maybe let's say change these stacked micro vias to a skip via, you can do that from the properties panel. I just select this micro via and then I can click skip from one to three. And then what I would wanna do is of course, change this trace down to layer three and then I could delete this micro via. And so now I've done a skip via all the way from layer one to three. Now i mentioned earlier boomerang vias. Those are also very easy to do in Altium Designer. All you have to do is start routing a trace and then engage a layer transition with the asterisk key. Then once you're to this point, you can hit the eight key. Now what this is gonna do is it's going to allow you to select between different vias that are landing on this layer that you see in the right side of the screen. So if I just hit escape, hit tab, and then go over here to bottom layer, I can also change the via type just with the eight key. And you can see here I have my stacked options or I can go back to my through option. Generally in these types of boards, if you have the through option to route all the way through to the bottom layer, you should use it. And that's how you're gonna start a boomerang via. So I'm gonna start my boomerang via like this. And then when I get to my next layer transition, I'm gonna switch my destination layer to let's say this layer, so layer six, and then I can hit the eight key after unpausing, and then I'm gonna select this stacked via, and I'll just set it here, and that's it. I've now landed on layer six, so what I did is I started on the top layer, went all the way down to the bottom through this through hole, and then I came over and then up. The reason I did this is because it allows me to eliminate a stub on this layer one to layer eight layer transition. If I want to, I can of course go back, and if I needed to change this to let's say a skip via, that's fine, or I can just delete this layer six to seven transition, and then I can just keep the layer seven to eight transition. So instead of landing on layer six, I'm landing on layer seven. So that's pretty much how you use these different tools. They're very easy to access and configure. And of course, you can change all of the via sizing and stuff that you see here in the right-hand side uh, in the properties panel. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. This should give you a good introduction to the different types of vias used in more advanced designs and in high density designs. Now make sure to check out the links in the description. We have some great resources that show you how to use these different types of vias, as well as the stack ups that support these different types of vias. We'll also have another video coming soon that answers Senthil Kumar's other question about doing a fan out for a high density BGA. Make sure to leave your comments and questions in the comment section. And just like Senthil Kumar did, you can also reach me on LinkedIn. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. Yeah.